Well, hello everybody. Um, it's taken a long while. I hope everybody's great. Um, it's been a while for me to get this message together. Um, it's, it, there's been a lot on my mind. There's a lot going on in the world. Um, there's a lot fulfilling biblically right now as far as the prophecies are concerned. Um, we're going to touch more so on today um, with the paganism in the world, uh, the interfaithism once again, but in different, we're going to talk about different ways that, that it's that's taking effect right now and uh, also what does the first beast out of the sea in the, in the book of Revelation look like on earth? What does it look like? We're going to talk about that because a lot of people see this um, you know this beast coming out of the sea with ten horns and ten crowns wearing the name blasphemy and you see this picture and it just looks like uh, you know like someone's drawn this image uh, it's like symbolic and um, really it has a you, it manifests on the earth and so we're going to go through a little bit of that today I did a, a chart I'll have to redo it again I can't find it um, just sort of a picture of what it looks like um, so we're going to go through starting today um, I want to claim the scripture here um, 2 Timothy 1 7 for God gave us a spirit, a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Some scriptures say of sound mind. Let's say it again. Let's really declare this because um, if you have your Bibles, open it up to 2 Timothy 1.7. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version on my document here. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We have to remember that. As we go into this this battle right now, that we are in a spiritual warfare that has increased greatly through many many years, and it's it's reaching the cusp right now. And um, as the Bible says, that we will see times that are so bad on this earth that no time before and no time after will compare to this time. So as we as believers, we, we go and do the work of the kingdom and we, we serve every day um, and edify others and help them. We need to remember that God did not give us a spirit of fear. That is a spirit. That's from the pit of hell. That is from Satan. That is not of God. So he gives us a spirit of power and of love and self-control. We, as followers of Christ, we are fearless in this Holy Spirit. And God has a hedge of protection around his children, so we must trust in God. Amen. Can we get an amen for that? Because uh, we got to trust in him. It's all about faith. Believe in him. Believe his word. Believe what he says. Um, know his power. We don't want to be like the Bible says in the last days. Um, perilous times will come, which, you know, this is all prophesied. And in the end of that, it says, they will wear the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. So you've got a lot of fluffy puffies, and I know I've said this before. Unfortunately, we're going to get into that aspect, too. There's Paul Begley coined that phrase, and it's a really good phrase, actually. Um, fluffy, puffy churches, and it's very sad to even say that, um, where they are very churchy, they'll go to church on Sundays, but where are they, where, where is that churchiness all week? So Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me every day. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. Our, there was a sermon I listened to at my church, um, and it was really good. Uh, they were talking about, what about your, your Monday through Saturday self? Do you bring that person to church on Sunday? See, the churchy folk, as we say, or churchy people, um, God bless them, let's pray for them seriously. We, we need to pray seriously for everybody right now um, because God loves them. He loves us all. And nobody's better than anybody else. So um, we gotta pray for them because there is, you know, we all, we all fall short. But what I'm saying is this, that we should be true in spirit and truth and come, you know, not pretend to everybody else that everything's perfect when we go to church. That's not how it should be. You should be around believers that are honest and that are filled with the spirit. And if they say, how are you? You know what? I'm not feeling too good today, but I'm blessed. I, I just, can you pray for me? I mean, something like that sort. 
you know, not everything's perfect all the time because we don't live in a perfect world. We're not perfect. We don't live in a perfect world and we will, you know, we suffer. We suffer through things. Everybody's going to. So, you know, I uh, just want to say that. So, we're going to move forward and back onto the topic of today I'm going to speak about the prophetic messages that I've received through Scripture and God's confirmation with His Holy Spirit uh, about, you know, things that are coming now or things that we're dealing with. Um, as a watchman, I have specific warnings for the believers um, and maybe non-believers that need to come to Jesus and, and take heed to what I'm saying as well. Um, you know, so there's, there's the dream, the prophetic dream that I want to share. So there's, there's a couple of different things that I'm going to be sharing today. Um, I received a prophetic message, uh, I'm sorry, a prophetic dream on April 28th, 2016. So I'm going to just sort of read this because it's better for me to read it uh, to give you a true sense of what this dream looked like, to envision it. Um, so in the dream, I was instructed by a man who I did not see, um, and he was near me in the upper realm of the earth. So we were near each other. I couldn't see him. I could see the earth below, and there were vast areas which, which made up a battleground um, and God's arm, where God's army would be, this vastness, and then this, this ridge right here, and there was a hill going downward, and that's where the enemy's army would be. And I saw a vision of multitudes of that dark army. The man instructed me to teach, to teach the soldiers, let me move this over here. We're gonna have to, I'm sorry. Please, please excuse me. I have to make this a little bit smaller. So, all right. Let me make this a little bit smaller here. I'm sorry. There's a lot of information here, so I'm just trying to to fit it all in. Okay. So, um, I saw the vision of the multitudes of the dark army. The man instructed me to prepare the soldiers, teach them how to fight with their swords, and equip them for this war. Then the last thing he said was, be sure it's the right time. There's no, there's no going back once it starts. So I believe it's the right time now to prepare with an urgency, to prepare the other soldiers. In the dream, the sword was the word of God. We fight with God's weapons, and the battle, the battle is so fierce, it's like nothing we've seen. Um, the battle we're headed into now. So we must pray daily for God's armor. Um, and I've gone through this before, but every day, and if you can't memorize it, just say, God, please give me your full armor today so that I can stand firm against the enemy and help me to wear it well. In Jesus' name, just pray for that. Every day we need that protection. Every day. And be, be prepared to watch and pray. Watch with your spiritual eyes. And pray. Pray that God opens your eyes. I pray for this all the time. Pray that He opens your eyes so that you can see things with your spiritual eyes, with discernment. Watch and pray. Watch the things going on in the world. See how they manifest from the spiritual to the physical. Watch and pray. He said that three times. He commanded that. So He didn't just ask us. He didn't just ask us to, to do it. He commanded us. Um, that's one of His commands. And so pray for each other. Apostle Paul always talks about this, and there's a lot in the Bible about praying for each other. Prayer does change things. Prayer is powerful against the schemes of the enemy. We can pray against things that we see coming as watchmen or as soldiers for Christ or believers. We see things coming, pray against it. And praying to God, of course, that's, there's power in prayer. Praise is very powerful. When the enemy is attacking, praise. Praise is our weapon. You know, there's a song called that, and I like to sing it because... Man, it's, it's true. Praise, just praise the Lord when, when you're being attacked and see how things change and pray against things in the name of Jesus Christ because he gave us that power to do that in his name. So we want to definitely, um, you know, stay in prayer. Um, I'm trying to find where we are now. Okay, so we're all right, watching and praying. I, I sort of got off the subject there. Well, on the subject, but I'm off. Um, the whole body, we have to pray for the whole body of Christ consistently, consistently, and worship the Lord. Study His Word diligently. 
rightly dividing the word of truth as 2 Timothy 2.15 instructs us to do as all believers. All believers are instructed to do this. So we, I didn't realize all my life how important being in the Bible, being in the word of God is. They're, the scriptures are the living word. They're, Jesus is the word and the word was with God in the beginning, capital W. And he spoke everything into existence. So God spoke, thing, let there be light through the word. Jesus Christ, he was always there. So was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit hovering above the earth. So being in the Word of God, we need that. It's our food. You know, the other day, the scriptures kept coming to me when, when you know, there was people that, followers of his disciples that, you know, not the twelve, but the other people following him, and they didn't understand him. They said, you must eat my flesh and drink of my blood to have a part of me. I'm paraphrasing, but... Pretty much, uh, that's what it says. So they, we don't understand these sayings. We don't understand what you're saying. His body, he's the living word of God. This, the food is our, it's our food, okay. And then, and the blood um, is the sacrifice, the the free gift of salvation through His bloodshed, His superior blood for us, for the atonement of sins, so that we can be forgiven by God's grace, and through our faith we're saved. So that's really, really important. That came to me the other day. So, um, so we need to stay in the Word, definitely. So I received the dream and I'm preparing the body of Christ, people that I run into, other soldiers, and on video, wherever, with this information of how the enemy is attacking. So we're going to get into ways of how the enemy is attacking right now. What God has revealed to me through the scriptures, the prophecies, and the confirmation of His Holy Spirit, this will prepare believers so they're not blindsided or surprised by the plans and tactics being used by Satan to destroy as many souls as he can in the little time that he has left here on this earth. He has very little time, so he's working hard and fast. Meanwhile, we're getting stronger. Um, the scriptures say, and this is, this is something as, as believers we have to always remember. We don't tiptoe around with darkness. We don't tiptoe around with filth, the filth of the world, you know, this, this sinful life, and we got to get out of that. Uh, we're called out of this world to be a peculiar people, the Bible says. So the scriptures say in Ephesians 5.11, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. 1 John 1.6, if we say we have fellowship with him, Jesus, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So we can't tiptoe and play t uh, footsie with the world and say we're walking with Jesus Christ. You know, I learned that my whole life. There was I didn't even realize what darkness I was in. I was fumbling around. I was a believer fumbling around in the darkness in the world. And um, I had no idea what was going on. I was so lost. God just protected me because I was so lost and so broken and so just filled with filth. Just the ways of the world and just really sinful. So, I mean, and we all continue to sin, but in the iniquity, I was living in iniquity. There's a big difference between sinning, we all do, but staying in a sin that we know is a sin or have, no, oh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but, you know, it makes me happy. So I'm going to just keep doing it because I think that that's, that's deception from, from Satan. I think, you know, it's, it's okay because, you know, God wants me to be happy. That's, that's a lie. If it's a sin, it's a sin. And iniquity is continuous sin, so a way of life. Um, there's many ways of life that are, you know, you know that we could live in iniquity. The, the world is full of it. They're full of different ways that are acceptable. In society, you know, fornication, uh, different sexual lifestyles, as we all know. And there's a lot of things that the world accepts, and that um, as believers, God reveals to us that you know we love others, but we don't take part in those things anymore, and we help others out of the darkness. I was in the darkness, and I had people helping me, you know, planting seeds and getting me out of the darkness. Praise God! Praise God for that. He's so wonderful. Um, I'm going to end this segment right here. We're going to come back in with um, the great deception and certain messages that I have for that. So it'll just be a few seconds. So we'll go to part two. All right.